Choosing a life partner is one of the biggest decisions you will make in your lifetime. Apart from being the biggest, it is also a difficult decision to make. As believers, we know what a partner means, the effect they have in our lives and because of that, we cannot afford to make a wrong choice. If you are truly following and living by the principles of Christ, you will know that you have to get it right because divorce is not an option. Your forever can be peaceful and happy ride if you are willing to follow the directives of Christ. If you are at the stage that you are about to make this life-changing decision or you are still searching, follow me as we discuss the godly instructions on how to choose your partner wisely. If only you will follow it, then you can be sure to have a kind of partner that will make life easier for you and help you become everything God wants you to be. The first godly instruction you need to follow in choosing your partner wisely has to start with you. If you want to choose the kind of partner that will be everything you want in life, you must have made up your mind first to follow God's principles and not the world's principles on how to choose a partner. This instruction cannot be left out because it all starts with you. God doesn't impose His will on us, so in the end, the final decision rests with you. Beloved, you need to ask yourself this question, am I going to follow the word of God or follow the world's way? Only you can truly answer this question for yourself. If you want a solid marriage, you have to build on the rock, which is the word of Jesus Christ. But if you want a sinking marriage, then follow the world. Your definition of a perfect spouse might be very different from the definition of the perfect spouse that God is choosing for you. Maybe their looks or status might not fit into what you have imagined for your spouse, but they are your perfect spouse even though you don't see it. This person will possess all the godly qualities of a good spouse, but they will be lacking in every other which you so desire to have and that leaves you at the junction where you don't know what to pick. I want to tell you to make up your mind to follow the word of God. Following the world's principles on marriage will make you build your marriage on the sinking sand which will fall, however you can decide to be the wise builder by building on the rock. The world's idea on how to choose a partner is allowing your emotions to be the supreme deciding factor, but by now with the number of failed marriages, we know that emotions alone cannot sustain a marriage. The love you think you have for a person today will eventually drop, and if you are getting married to them because of a particular thing that they have or attribute, it will eventually change one day because change is constant. Love is a decision that one makes and not how one feels. Don't get me wrong, I am not saying feelings and love don't go hand in hand. They do, but if you are to make a decision based on how you feel, you might end up making a wrong choice because feelings change. If you follow the word of God and not your feelings, you will be better prepared to make a wise decision regarding your partner because the Holy Spirit will lead you. The second godly instruction on how to choose a partner wisely is to make sure he is a true believer. Now, where most of us get it wrong is that we think when a person knows that God exists and goes to church once in a while, means the person is a true believer. Well, sorry to disappoint you, he or she is not until they have a true relationship with the Father. The Bible speaks in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 14 to 15 says, Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Do not make mismated alliances with them or come under a different yoke with them, inconsistent with your faith. For what partnership has right living and right standing with God with iniquity and lawlessness, or how can light have fellowship with darkness? What harmony can there be between Christ and Belial, the devil? Or what has a believer in common with an unbeliever? If a person claims to know God, but does not have a personal relationship with him, then you can classify this person as an unbeliever, and you, my dear, have no business with him or her. I know that we are all not perfect with our work in Christ, but certain areas are not negotiable. When you are with someone who does not have a strong relationship with Christ, it's only a matter of time before they draw you away from Christ too. They might be okay with your relationship with God now because they love you, but in marriage, love is just not enough. With time, they will want to take you to places you are not comfortable with. 
They will complain about the time you spend in the church because they don't go to church often, and it's only a matter of time before you are forced to leave the church to satisfy your partner, and that's why we say light and darkness has no business. Some of us deceive ourselves by saying you will change them. My dear, get it clear now, when you cannot change them when dating, doesn't expect them to change in marriage, except the Holy Spirit intervenes. As believers, always choose a fellow believer as your partner that is God's instruction. The third godly instruction you need to follow when choosing your partner wisely is always listening to what people that are closest to you are saying and also hearing God. The Bible speaks in the book of Proverbs, chapter 15, verse 22 says, Where there is no counsel, purposes are frustrated, but with many counselors, they are accomplished. Now I know that you are old enough to make your decision for yourself, but in the case of marriage, trust me, you don't want to make this decision on your own. It's not that you are seeking their permission, no. You are only giving them the opportunity of drawing your attention to places where your love has blinded you from seeing. A person who seeks counsel never gets lost. They only help you make a better decision. In taking counsel from people who are closest to you, you must make sure that they belong to the body of Christ. They should be people that you can trust that they hear from God, and they will put you on the right path. When listening to their opinion, you must make sure that you are not looking for someone to just agree with you because if you are doing that, you will never know what you need to know. Also, hear God for yourself. If you have heard Him clearly when He was showing you your spouse, you will not be scared of hearing from other people because their words will come as a confirmation of what God has already told you. Don't be so fast because of the desperation to get married that you throw away all your sense of reasoning. What you refuse to hear today, tomorrow might be too late to listen to it because the deed has already been done. Lastly, on godly instructions in choosing a life partner wisely, you need to choose someone you are compatible with. The book of Amos chapter 3 verse 3 says, Do two walk together except they make an appointment and have agreed? When you are not compatible with someone, you will not be able to agree, and this will lead to a lot of troubles that you will not be able to bear, except the Holy Spirit intervene. Before getting married, make sure you chose a partner with whom you both share the same vision. I'm not saying you will agree on everything, but at least you should be able to agree on the important things. Some of us have already seen the warning sign that you and a person are not compatible but you still push yourself into marriage at all costs because you want to be married. If you both don't share similar values and beliefs, then marriage is a no. Your forever is too long to be spent on arguing about whose path should you take. God has said two cannot walk except they agree. If you need to check and double check, then do so until you are sure that you both agree. Following the instructions of the Lord, especially in marriage, is one of the hardest, but the best choice you will ever make. Those who have followed their directives will tell you is not a nice place to be. Although following God's instructions is hard, I beg you to do it if you want to live a full life of happiness and a fulfilled marriage life. My prayer for you today is that you don't lose focus on Christ's instructions and follow that of the world, and that you do not fall for the devil. In Jesus' name, Amen. Stay blessed.